Hello to everyone, my name is Luis Montalvo, and today I'm going to talk about Cutis verticus gerata associated with acromegaly. I'm a med student at the Universidad Católica Santiago de Guayaquil, and here are my Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram accounts, so you can follow me and watch the other videos I uploaded about other topics. Now, introduction. What is Cutis verticus gerata? Well, it is... It is also known by the name of Pachydermia verticus urata, Cutis verticus plicata, and Bulldog Scalp Syndrome. It is a rare benign cutaneous disorder that is characterized by convoluted folds and deep furrows of the scalp that mimic cerebral sulci and gyri. What is acromegaly? Well, it is a disorder that results from excess growth hormone after the growth plates have closed. It develops when the pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone during adulthood. A common sign of acromegaly is enlarged hands and feet, and people with this disorder often notice that they aren't able to put on rings that used to fit and that their shoe size has progressively increased. Acromegaly may also cause gradual changes in the shape of your face, such as protruding lower jaw and brow and enlarged nose, thick and lips, and wider spacing between your teeth. Application in medicine. Cutis verticus urata now falls under the three categories. Primary essential, primary non-essential, and secondary. Primary essential CVG has no other associated abnormalities. Primary non-essential CVG is associated with intellectual disability, neuropsychiatric disorders, seizures, schizophrenia, cerebral palsy, and ophthalmologic abnormalities. And secondary cutis verticus urata has been reportedly associated with pachydermal peristosis, cerebriform intradermal nebus, and acromegaly. According to the National Institutes of Health, more than 95% of people who have acromegaly have a benign tumor affecting their pituitary. Now here is a video. Cutis verticus gerata, which is just more scalp. There's no cure for it. And what we're planning on today is just to do some excisions and then try to do scalp reduction to give this a more even look and get rid of some of the excess scalp. So this is the second excision. We excised this two weeks ago for scalp reduction for CVG. And now today we're doing our second excision, which is this piece of scalp in the form of one of the gyruses, if you will. And now we're gonna close this. And then you won't have that excess skin anymore. Okay. Pros and cons. Pros. Cutis verticus urata can be treated surgically by removing the excess of scalp. As in this case, a pituitary tumor is the cause of acromegaly and secondary CVG, the excision of the tumor solves the problem. And a con is that other changes that occur in acromegaly, such as excess growth of face, hands, and feet, are irreversible. Acromegaly is actually quite a rare disease, occurring about 3.5 patients per million per year, and it's caused by growth hormone production by a pituitary tumor. The symptoms of acromegaly can be subtle and very slow in onset, and those include changes in the sizes of your hands and your feet, as well as facial features, which include enlargement of the nose, protrusion of the jaw, something we call frontal bossing, which is enlargement of the brow bone. The issues with acromegaly are that the disease oftentimes comes on slowly over a period of years. So even though we can normalize the hormone in the long haul, some of the um, symptoms and signs of acromegaly are not reversible, including the bony changes that occur. In addition to the changes in the bony features, acromegaly can also be associated with fatigue, hypertension, diabetes, um, oftentimes induces joint pain, can sometimes cause sleep apnea, and carpal tunnel symptoms.
Acromegaly is classically treated with surgery. That is the first-line treatment for the disease. If the tumor is less than a centimeter by a centimeter in size, the cure rate with surgery approaches 80 to 90 percent. However, if the tumor is larger than a centimeter by a centimeter in size, the cure rate does fall and sometimes approaches around the range of 50 percent. Clearly, having an expertise of a good neurosurgeon is critical in the treatment of this disease. If we do not achieve a surgical cure with acromegaly, what are the options for treatment? Well, those include medications, which can help to control the levels, and in addition to that, radiation therapy with CyberKnife and GammaKnife therapy, which is an exquisitely pinpoint treatment for brain tumors and pituitary tumors alike. The advantage of using CyberKnife or GammaKnife therapy is really a bullet-like approach to the tumor and sparing the rest of the brain tissue from radiation effect. Unfortunately, because the pituitary gland is such a small gland, when we are targeting the pituitary gland, and in the sense of the tumor that lies within it, we can sometimes knock out pituitary function. So anyone who has radiation therapy, gamma knife or cyber knife, to the pituitary gland does have follow-up with us long-term to assure that their pituitary function remains normal. And in addition to that, if indeed the tumor is close to the optic nerves, then radiation therapy is something that sometimes cannot be achieved without damaging the optic nerves. Issue in Ecuador. CVG is predominantly seen in men with a reported prevalence of about 1 in 100,000 males and 0.026 in 100,000 females. There are reports of CVG in Ecuador, but there are no further data there is no further data about this problem in Ecuador. In conclusion is that ZVG associated with acromegaly can be cured by treating what is causing the acromegaly, which in most cases, 95%, is a pituitary tumor, and the skin folds in the head can be corrected surgically. Thanks for watching my presentation and have a nice day.